section thirty seven of sikh religion volume five by max arthur mcauliffe this librivox recording is in the public domain compositions of guru gobind singh thirty three soayas quatrains the following thirty three soayas are also read in abchalangar and other places while the sikh baptismal water is being prepared several orthodox sikhs say that these are the sawayas which ought always to be read at the baptism and of this indeed there is internal evidence one he who repeateth night and day the name of him whose enduring light is unquenchable who bestoweth not a thought of, on any but the one god who hath full love and confidence in god who putteth not faith even by mistake in fasting or worshipping cemeteries places of cremation or yogis places of sepulture who only recognizeth the one god and not pilgrimages alms the non-destruction of life hindu penances or austerities and in whose heart the light of the perfect one shineth he is recognized as a pure member of the khalsa two god is true eternal true to his promise he is from the beginning without beginning unfathomable and invincible bounty mercy self-control austerities daily ceremonies continence fasting clemency religious observances are all contained in the name of the immutable one he is from the beginning pure without a beginning infinite endless without enmity without fear he hath form and is without form or outline he groweth not old he is compassionate and merciful to the poor three god is from the beginning without enmity without garb great true refulgent and resplendent he filleth the inmost hearts of all meditation on him the real thing curbeth natural inclinations thou wert in the beginning before the ages before the world o god thou art all-pervading and dwellest in every heart compassionate to the poor merciful mine of mercy from the beginning unborn invincible indestructible for in the beginning indestructible imperishable everlasting o god the veds and the books of the mussulmans have found not thy secret compassionate to the poor merciful ocean of mercy true everlasting diffused in every heart sheshnag indar ganesh and shiv have searched the veds but found not thy depth o foolish man say why hast thou forgotten god who is ever manifest five god is immovable from the beginning stainless infinite true and everlasting he is adored as primeval unconceived unborn free from old age supremely pure illimitable he is well known as the self-existent renowned in the whole world one yet in different places o base man why recognize not god who is without stain six o creator thou art imperishable from the beginning without blemish without limits true and eternal thou ever providest sustenance for all animals which are in sea and land the veds the purans the koran describe thee in various ways in the rest of the world there is at last naught but thee o divine one thou art sovereign ruler over all seven thou art known as from the beginning unfathomable imperishable indivisible invisible invincible and illimitable thou art in the past the future the present thou art adored in every place demigods demons sheshnag noad and saraswati recognize thee as true and eternal the purans and the koran know not the secrets of the compassionate to the poor the ocean of mercy eight o true and eternal one perpetual is thy dominion it is thou who madest the veds and the koran 
thou didst appoint demigods demons sheshnag the past and the present from the beginning before the ages the stainless the indestructible thy light is seen though thou art unseen o foolish man who hath come to tell thee of the invisible god nine demigods demons sheshnag serpents famous sids have done great penance the veds the purans the koran all have grown weary singing thy praises o god but thou art not known unto them thou knowest all hearts on earth in heaven and in the nether regions and in every direction thy praises fill the earth they entering my heart told me this ten the veds and the books of the mussulmans have not found god's secret all the sids have grown weary contemplating him the trees shastars ved and purans all describe him in various ways but god who was in the beginning and who had no beginning whose story is unfathomable cannot be known he saved dru prahlad and ajamal the courtesan was saved by repeating god's name that name is my support the object of my thoughts eleven all recognize that god was in the beginning that he had no beginning that he is unfathomable eternal and perfect the gandharbs the yakshas sheshnag the earth-dwelling serpents the firmament and the four quarters of the world know god the visible and invisible worlds the eight directions the demons as well as the demigods all worship god o man of ignorant mind through regard for whom hast thou forgotten the omniscient the self-existent the treasure twelve some fasten an idol firmly to their breasts some say that shiv is god some say that god is in the temple of the hindus others believe that he is in the mosque of the mussulmans some say that ram is god some say krishan some in their hearts accept the incarnations as god but i have forgotten all vain religion and know in my heart that the creator is the only god thirteen ye say that god is unconceived and unborn how could he have been born from the womb of kausalya if he whom we call krishan were god why was he subject to death why should god whom ye describe as holy and without enmity have driven arjan's chariot worship as god him whose secret none hath known or shall know fourteen say if krishan were the ocean of mercy why should the hunter's arrow have struck him if he can save other families why did he destroy his own say why did he who called himself the eternal and the unconceived enter into the womb of devaki why did he who had no father or mother call the sudev his father fifteen why call shiv god and why speak of brahma as god god is not ram chandar krishan or vishnu whom ye suppose to be lords of the world shukdev parasar and vyas erred in abandoning the one god and worshipping many gods all have set up false religions i in every way believe that there is but one god sixteen some worship brahma as god others point to shiv as god some say that vishnu is the lord of the world and that by worshipping him all sins are erased think on this a thousand times old fool at the last hour all thy gods will forsake thee meditate on him in thy heart who was is and ever shall be seventeen he who made millions of indars he who made and destroyed some millions of bawans demons demigods serpents sheshnags birds and beasts innumerable to whom till to-day shiv and brahma are doing penance without finding his limit he whose secrets the veds and the koran have not penetrated is the great being whom the guru hath shown me eighteen 
o man by attitudes of contemplation matted hair and the overgrown nails of thy hands thou deceivest all people thou goest about with ashes smeared on thy face and cheatest all the demigods and the demons addicted to avarice thou wanderest from house to house the means by which a yog is obtained thou hast all forgotten thou hast lost all shame and succeeded in nothing without love god cannot be obtained nineteen o foolish man why play the hypocrite thou losest thine honour by practising hypocrisy o cheat why cheat people this world is lost to thee and so is the next where the compassionate to the poor dwelleth there shalt thou find no place think o oh, think thou thoughtless and great fool the unseen is not found by assuming garbs twenty why worship a stone god is not in a stone worship him as god by the worship of whom all thy sins shall be erased and by uttering whose name thou shalt be freed from all thy mental and bodily entanglements make the meditation of god ever thy rule of action no advantage can be obtained by the practice of false religion twenty one false religion is without fruit by the worship of stones thou hast wasted millions of ages how can perfection be obtained by touching stones nay strength and prosperity thus decrease and the nine treasures are not obtained time passeth away while saying to-day to-day thou shalt not accomplish thine object art thou not ashamed o fool thou hast not worshipped god so thy life hath been passed in vain twenty two if for ages thou do penance to a stone it will never rejoice thee o fool it will never generously lift its arm to requite thee say what confidence can be placed in it when trouble ariseth it will not come to save thee o ignorant and obstinate man be assured that thy false religion and superstition will ruin thee twenty three all are bound in the meshes of death no ram or moslem prophet was able to save himself god having created destroyed and will again create and destroy demons demigods and sheshnags they who were called incarnations in the world at last died before men's eyes in remorse o fickle man why not run to touch the feet of god above twenty four brahma appeared by god's order and taking his staff and water-pot wandered upon earth we know that she was born at the appointed time and visited all countries the world was created and destroyed at the appointed time wherefore let all recognize god renouncing all the subtleties of the veds and the koran i worship god alone the treasury of mercy twenty five o blockhead thy life hath passed in thy present occupations thou hast not thought in thy heart of the merciful god abandoning shame thou hast grown shameless and leaving thy proper work hast done useless work for thyself when thou hadst horses and great royal elephants thou foolishly thoughtest to ride on donkeys thou didst not worship god o fool and so didst shamefully spoil thy good business twenty six thou hast for long read the veds and the books of the mussulmans but not found a secret in them thou hast wandered in various places to worship but the one god thou hast never seated in thy heart thou hast bowed thy head to stones and cemeteries but obtained not o foolish man forsaking the manifest god why art thou entangled in thine obstinacy twenty seven if any one go to a monastery of yogis they will ask him to repeat the name of gorak if any one go to a monastery of sanyasis they will say that only the trate is true and they will give him his name as the spell of initiation if any one go to the mussulmans they will seize and convert him to the faith of muhammad every sect deemeth that the creator is with itself alone but no one can disclose the creator's secrets 
twenty eight if any one go to the yogis they will tell him to give everything house and property to them if any one haste to the sanyasis they will tell him to part with his house in the name of dattatra if any one go to the masands they will tell him to bring all his property at once and give it to them every one saith bring me bring me but nobody will show me god twenty nine if any one serve the masands they will say fetch and give us all thine offerings go at once and make a present to us of whatever property is in thy house think on us night and day and mention not others even by mistake if they hear of any one giving they run to him even at night they are not at all pleased at not receiving thirty they put oil into their eyes to make people believe that they are shedding tears if they see any of their own worshippers wealthy they serve up sacred food and feed him with it if they see him without wealth they give him nothing though he beg for it they will not even show him their faces those beasts plunder men and never sing the praises of the supreme being thirty one they close their eyes like cranes and offer the world a spectacle of deceit they go about with their heads bowed down like poachers cats on seeing such attitudes would be ashamed the more they go about clinging to the hope of wealth the more they lose this world and the next thou hast not repeated god's name o fool but why art thou entangled in thy domestic affairs thirty two why impress false religion on the world it will be of no service to it why run about for the sake of wealth thou shalt not be able to fly from death's myrmidons son wife friends disciple companions none of these will bear witness for thee think o oh, think thou thoughtless and great brute thou shalt at the last moment have to depart alone thirty three hear o oh, fool when life leaveth thy body thy wife crying out ghost ghost will flee thee thy son thy wife thy friends and companions will give orders to remove thee quickly when life leaveth thy body all thy mansions storehouses lands and forts will become the property of others think o oh, think thou thoughtless and great brute thou shalt at the last moment have to depart alone end of compositions of guru gobind singh thirty three sawayas quatrains section thirty eight of sikh religion volume five by max arthur mcauliffe this librivox recording is in the public domain compositions of guru gobind singh hazar shabad o man practise asceticism in this way consider thy house altogether as the forest and remain an anchoret at heart make continence thy matted hair union with god thine ablutions thy daily religious duties the growth of thy nails divine knowledge thy spiritual guide admonish thy heart and apply god's name as ashes to thy body eat little sleep little love mercy and forbearance ever practise mildness and patience and thou shalt be freed from the three qualities attach not to thy heart lust wrath covetousness obstinacy and worldly love thus shalt thou behold the real soul of this world and obtain the supreme being o man practise yog in this way make truth thy horn sincerity thy necklace and apply meditation as ashes to thy body make restraint of thy heart thy lyre and the support of the name thine alms play the primal essence as thy strings and thou shalt hear god's sweet song by the practice of the songs of divine knowledge waves of melody and exquisite pleasure shall be produced the demons and the demigods in their celestial chariots will be astonished and the munis intoxicated with delight admonish thy heart down the garb of self-restraint and utter god's name inaudibly so shall thy body ever remain like gold and death never approach thee 
o mortal touch the feet of the supreme being why sleepest thou the sleep of worldly love be sometimes wakeful and alert why instruct others o beast since thou hast no knowledge thyself why ever accumulate sin even now lay aside the love of it deem such things simply as errors and love truly religious acts ever lay up the remembrance of god renounce and flee from mortal sin by this means shalt thou not encounter sorrow or sin and escape from death's noose if thou desire ever to have happiness of every kind be absorbed in god's love o god my honour resteth with thee it is thou who art the blue-throated man-lion moving in the water blue-robed wearing a necklace of flowers it is thou who art the primal being supreme god lord pure living on air it is thou who art the lord of lakshmi great light destroyer of the pride of madhu bestower of salvation destroyer of myrrh it is thou who art changeless undecaying sleepless without evil passions preserver from hell ocean of mercy seer of the past present and future effacer of evil acts it is thou who hast the bow in the hand who art patient supporter of the earth changeless wielder of the sword i of feeble intellect have taken the protection of thy feet take my hand and save me o man worship none but god not a thing made by him know that he who was in the beginning unborn invincible and indestructible is god what if vishnu coming into this world killed some of the demons and exercising great deceit induced every one to call him god how can he who himself did not escape from the stroke of the sword of death be deemed god the destroyer the fashioner the omnipotent the eternal hear o fool how can he who was drowned in the ocean of the world save thee thou shalt only escape from death's noose when thou seizest the feet of him who existed before the world when the guru left damdama his disciples sent a messenger after him to tell him of their sad plight the following is the complaint as versified by the guru others say that the hymn was addressed to god by the guru himself tell the dear friend the condition of his disciples without thee the wearing of our blankets is a disease to us and dwelling in our houses is as if we dwelt with serpents our water-pots are stakes of torture our cups are daggers thy turning away from us is like what animals endure from butchers our beloved's palate would be pleasant to us living in towns is like living in a furnace god alone is the creator the beginning and the end of all things endless the fashioner and the destroyer to whom blame and praise are the same who hath no enemy no friend what necessity hath he to become the driver of arjan's chariot the bestower of salvation hath no father mother caste son or grandson why should he have come into the world to be called the son of devaki when he who created demigods demons the eight directions and all extension is called by the name of murar what glory is it to him how can god be in human form sids have grown weary sitting in contemplation of him but they have not been able to see him in any way such persons as narad vyas parasar and dru have deeply meditated on him the veds and the purans have grown weary and abandoned their purpose since they could form no conception of him demons demigods fiends sprites describe him as indescribable the faithful consider him as the subtlest of the subtle and again pointed him out as the largest of the large the one god having made the earth the heaven and all the nether regions they call many he who entereth god's asylum shall be saved from death's noose i recognize none but the one god i know god as the destroyer the fashioner the omnipotent and eternal creator what availeth it to men to worship stones in various ways with great love and devotion the hand groweth weary by touching stones and no spiritual power is obtained rice incense lamps 
are offered to stones but they eat nothing what spiritual power is in them o fool what blessing can they bestow on thee if they had life they might give thee something be assured of this in thought word and deed except in the protection of the one sole god nowhere is salvation without god's name thou canst not be saved how shalt thou flee from him who holdeth the fourteen worlds in his power ram and rahim whose names thou repeatest cannot save thee brahma vishnu shiv the sun and moon are all in the power of death the veds the purans the koran all sects in darsheshnag the kings of the munis meditated for many ages on him who is called the indescribable but could form no conception of him why should he whose form and colour are not known be called black when thou shalt seize and cling to god's feet thou shalt be freed from the noose of death End of Compositions of Guru Gobind Singh Hazar Shabad Section 39 of Sikh Religion, Volume 5 by Max Arthur McAuliffe This LibriVox recording is in the public domain compositions of guru gobind singh chow pai o god give me thy hand and protect me and all my desires shall be fulfilled may my heart be ever attached to thy feet deem me thine own and cherish me destroy all mine enemies o creator may my family and all my servants and disciples live in peace destroy all mine enemies to-day and all my hopes shall be fulfilled may the thirst for repeating thy name abide with me and may i not forsaking thee meditate on any one besides may i obtain from thee whatever boon i crave save my servants and my disciples single out mine enemies and smite them remove from me the fear of the hour of death be thou always on my side o thou with the sword on thy banner protect me preserve me o thou preserver beloved lord protector of the saints friend of the poor destroyer of tyrants thou art lord of the fourteen worlds at the proper time brahma obtained a body at the proper time shiv became incarnate at the proper time vishnu appeared that was all the play of god my obeisance to that god who made shiv a yogi who made brahma the king of the veds and who fashioned all the world know that he is my guru who made the whole world who created demigods demons and yakshas who is the only god incarnate from beginning to end my obeisance to him alone who himself adorneth all his subjects who bestoweth divine attributes and happiness on his servants who destroyeth their enemies in a moment who knoweth what is within every heart and the sufferings of the good and bad he is pleased as he casteth a look of favour on all from the ant to the huge elephant he is grieved when his saints are grieved and happy when his saints are happy he knoweth every one's sufferings and every secret of man's heart when the creator projected himself his creatures assumed endless shapes whenever thou drawest creation within thyself o lord all embodied beings are absorbed in thee all creatures endowed with speech speak of thee according to their understanding thou dwellest apart from everything the wise and the learned know the secret of this o formless one thou art changeless and independent thou art the primal one stainless without beginning self-existent the fool boasteth that he knoweth the secrets of him whose secrets are not known even to the veds the great fool supposeth that god is a stone and knoweth not the difference between them he ever calleth the eternal god shiv and knoweth not the secrets of the formless one men according to their different understandings give different descriptions of thee o god thine extension cannot be conceived nor how thou didst first 
fashioned creation thou hast but one form and that form is incomparable thou art in different places a poor man a lord or a king thou madest life from eggs wombs and perspiration and again thou madest a mine of vegetables sometimes thou sittest as a monarch on the lotus flower sometimes as a sheev thou gatherest up creation thou didst display the whole creation as a miracle thou art the primal one from the beginning of time thy form was uncreated o god protect me now save those who are my disciples and destroy those who are not the enemies who rise in rebellion and all infidels destroy thou them in the battlefield the enemies of those who sought thy protection o god have died in misery thou hast removed all the troubles of those who fall at thy feet death shall never approach those who even once meditate on thee o god they shall be protected at all times and their enemies and their troubles shall instantly vanish thou removest in an instant the sufferings of those whom thou beholdest with a look of favour they possess in their homes all temporal and spiritual blessings and no enemies can touch even their shadows him who even once remembereth thee thou savest from the noose of death he who repeateth thy name shall be free from poverty and the assaults of enemies o thou with the sword on thy banner i seek thy protection give me thine own hand and save me be thou everywhere my helper and save me from the designs of mine enemies after the completion of the morning and evening obligatory divine services and of the uninterrupted reading or chanting of the granth sahib the sikhs repeat a prayer or supplication called ardas which may now suitably end our presentation of the lives and writings of the ten gurus shri ra guru ji ki fata having first remembered the sword meditate on guru nanak then on guru on god armar das and ram das may they assist us remember arjan har gobind and the holy hari rai meditate on the holy hari krishan a sight of whom dispelled all sorrow remember teg bahadur and the nine treasures shall come hastening to your homes ye holy gurus everywhere assist us may the tenth king the holy guru gobind singh everywhere assist us god himself knoweth he himself acteth it is he who adjusteth standing in his presence nanak make supplication sikhs of the true immortal god turn your thoughts to the teachings of the granth sahib and the deeds of the khalsa utter wa guru meditating on the deathless one endowed with all power compassionate and just utter wa guru meditating on the deeds of those who worshipped the name plied the sword ate and distributed their food in companionship and overlooked others faults o khalsa utter wa guru o deathless creator illimitable this creature forgetting thy name is so attached to worldly goods that he hath forgotten the real thing without thy supreme mercy how shall we cross the ocean of the world o great king lust wrath greed worldly love jealousy and other evil passions greatly trouble our minds but on coming towards thee worldly maladies and afflictions are healed and dispelled show us such favour that we may by word and deed be thine and that in all things we may obtain thine assistance and support grant to thy sikhs the gift of sikhism the gift of the guru's instruction the gift of faith the gift of confidence in thee and the gift of reading and understanding the holy granth sahib may the sikh choirs mansions and banners ever abide victory to the faith may the minds of the sikhs be humble but their intellects exalted utter waguru 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 we offer this artist in thy presence and at thy lotus feet pardon our errors and mistakes may all sikhs who read and hear the guru's hymns be profited through nanak may thy name o god be exalted 
and all prosper by thy grace shri waguru ji ka khalsa shri waguru ji ki fatah end of compositions of guru gobind singh chow pai end of sikh religion volume five by max arthur mccallough